I was never comfortable as a kid. I don't know why. I never really felt like I fitted in anywhere. I ended up getting into inhalants, lighter fluid, about 11. I started playing around with those sort of things and um, running away from home a lot. And then I ended up in 1976 in King's Cross. Something sort of pretty traumatic happened to me my first night up there. And um, I then discovered the needle and amphetamines. And um, before I knew it, I was prostituting myself from the cross and um, to support this new drug habit that I had. Jails, institutions and death, that's what where addiction, it's all that's available to us, you know, in the long term. And you know, I'd done the other two and death was what was coming. I tried suicide a couple of times the last couple of years. It was probably a cry for help more than anything really. But I was that desperate, I was, I was broken. And um, then I heard about William Booth uh, from a guy in the rooms, in the, in the rooms of NA. And um, he told me about that, you had your own room. And I thought, wow, okay. The reason I'd walked out of any rehab before was because I was in these dormitory situations that were just trauma inducing for myself and, and bringing back bad, bad memories. But something changed at William Booth. You know, I was um, only about four weeks in there and I met an amazing chaplain there. And um, even though I, I, you know, I'm not a religious person, um, she just talked to me and I just listened to her and uh, in the chapel there, there's a big sign there that sort of says, let go, let God. And um, you know, I, when I first saw that, you know, we used to do our little spirit lifter meetings every morning in there. I just thought, what does that mean? And, um, but then somehow I got it. And I just remember looking at, at, at Brahman and Amos and um, I just thought, I want what she's got. Even though I'd never believed in anything, I knew that I was missing something. You know what I mean? There was a hole in me that had been there for a long time that I'd been trying to fill with drugs. So I just opened my mind to it, you know? I let go, I let God. Now I found myself within a day or so of coming to that sort of comfortability within myself, finally. You know, I mean, I've never felt comfortable with myself, ever. And, uh, and I did there, you know? I, I could sort of drop all my masks. You know, no matter whether I was in prison or on the streets, I was always being someone that I wasn't, you know, because I didn't know who I was, you know. And I felt safe there. I think that's the key, you know, I mean, I felt safe at William Booth. One of the things about Booth that, um, that has changed me now is um, it gave me an opportunity to start, even at those early stages, start giving back. And I found that with Booth, you know, and there were some times when we took meals out for the homeless and um, it was just lots of opportunities to get out of myself and focus on others. I'm 126 days clean today and um, I've never been 126 days totally absolute clean since I was 13. That's 47 years ago and um, I'm grateful to William Booth because William Booth not only got me clean, but it saved my life. I went there for a little holiday to get back out on it, but I came out of there with a, a new purpose, and it's to stay clean.